This time around, we're going to go deep into Microsoft Exchange and Microsoft 365 mailbox sharing. Exactly how does it work and what are the pitfalls to avoid? So if you want to learn something cool, stick around. Greetings fellow YouTubers, welcome to the channel, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Hey listen, if this is your first time, you're very welcome, I really do appreciate you stopping by. On this week's episode, I thought I'd take a look at Microsoft Exchange Online, and specifically I've been having a lot of questions about mailbox sharing, exactly what are the pros, what are the cons, and also what are the pitfalls to avoid. So I thought in this session, I'm going to take you through both sharing from the user perspective and also sharing from the admin perspective, and just the different options that you can do. So uh, just a quick mention, by the way, I am well on my way to 10K. This is my first 10K uh, users, subscriptions, and I got to tell you, I really appreciate it. You guys are just a bunch of stars out there. But if the by chance you've not subscribed, then please go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on future tutorials. And as always, you know I love your comments questions and feedback so please just get them down below there and i'll do my best for you all right so i think without any more jibber jabber i think it's time we got into some demos and some serious learning here we go okay so i'm going to kick off my mailbox sharing demo here in microsoft 365 and we're going to come into the admin center and i'm going to go into the exchange admin center here now, there is a little bit of confusion about sharing of mailboxes. And to be honest, there's a number of different ways that you can do this. First up, a, a common thing that you could do is you could create something called a shared mailbox. And a shared mailbox doesn't need a license. However, it does require that every user that uses it to have a license. OK, so that's the first thing. Now, also one of the cool things about shared mailboxes um, is that any mailbox can actually be converted to become a shared mailbox. So, for example, if I click on to others here, one of the options in here is to convert the mailbox to a shared mailbox. Now, if I go ahead and click onto this, this is now going to convert it from a regular to a shared mailbox. So for example, if Adele was in my company and she was a salesperson and you wanted other folks in the sales team to have access to that mailbox, then rather than, uh, let's say, deleting the mailbox, you can just uh, grant other users access to it. All right, so if I close that down, come back into the mailbox here, go back to the other tab, and you can see that this is now a, uh, it's a shared mailbox and you can go back again. So I can, at any point, I can go back and convert this back to be a, a regular mailbox. So there we go. Um, super simple, super convenient. Just a gotcha, however, this does not work with Business Basic. So Business Basic, you do not have this functionality. You need the minimum of a business um, standard account or a business premium. And of course, all the enterprise accounts, it's no problem. Okay, so that's the first thing, the shared mailbox. So what else can we do with this user then? Well, I can go into the user's mailbox here. And if I click into the mailbox tab, um, you can see the mailbox tab here shows me any kind of size and delivery restrictions that I might have. I also have something called the default sharing policy, which I'll come back to in a second. All right, now, just before we leave this, the one thing that I would definitely say is the more, probably one of the most common places that you can assign permissions is up here on the delegation tab, okay? So the delegation tab, we essentially have three settings here, all right? So the first one is send as. 
Now, let's say, for example, uh, James Bond. So James Bond is the user and Miss Moneypenny is his assistant. So if you wanted Miss Moneypenny to send as James Bond. So when Miss Moneypenny sends an email, it would appear as if it's coming from James Bond. You understand? That's send as. Whereas send on behalf of, it would be coming as or from Miss Moneypenny uh, on behalf of James Bond. You understand? The third option is that you can read and manage. So this is if you actually wanted to assign another user full access to this particular mailbox. So for example, um, that I could give you is let's say that Adele's leaving the company and maybe her manager uh, wants to have access to certain uh, resources um, before any, anything's deleted. So you can do that. You can add members or if you want to assign the mailbox to another licensed user, then this is really useful. So ladies and gentlemen, send as, send on behalf of, and full access. So those are the, the three uh, kind of permissions there. All right. Now, so that's the first thing. Now, the other thing that you probably noticed is if I, uh, just a quick mention about this, in the organization policy, there is a tab here that talks about sharing. Now, don't be confused with this. This is actually talking about calendar sharing, and it talks about sharing between organizations and also individual calendar sharing. Um, I would... To be honest, I wouldn't do this here. I would tend to go in and share resources in Microsoft Teams. So remember that in Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Groups, um, you also have this capability. So I would, and you'll have noticed, by the way, that in the sharing tab here, this interface is actually the old Exchange Online interface. It's not really used very more, uh, very often. I would say it's probably legacy uh, technology, this. So if you want to share calendars, contacts, things like that, really the best place to go uh, is in Microsoft Teams. Now, um, on the subject of users, so in the last option there, you show, I showed you how you can set those permissions. So what I want to do here is I'm actually coming into Microsoft Outlook and again, another way to set permissions, but this time as a user. I can simply right click here and you can see that there is an option here that says assign permissions. Now this is very kind of granular permissions. And essentially what we have is you'll notice that we've really got kind of two sets or different types of permissions. So uh, read permissions, so what do you want the user to read? Nothing or the full details. Um, again, do you want users to be able to delete their own messages or all messages? Now, this is particularly useful if it's, for example, a group mailbox. Now, in terms of the permission levels, you'll notice here that we have a number of different permission roles or levels, okay? Now, um, the default setting, of course, is none. Now, again, if I had a group mailbox and I wanted you to be a contributor, that means you can contribute, you can add in content and so on, um, but you, you can't delete any messages, okay? A reviewer, for example, would be read only. So if I click on the reviewer, you can see that it breaks down and it shows me what permissions this user actually has. And as I go through the various roles, you can see that it adds the permissions in accordingly. All right. So, um, for example, the an owner permission, of course, they've got full access. So again, another way of granting a user full access permissions is you can simply go into here and I can say, hey, you know, I've got a user here called Megan and I want to grant her, uh, maybe not owner permissions, but let's say I'll grant her editor permissions. 
okay so she can create items she can edit everything and the folder the inbox folder is definitely visible so again i can now click onto that and she now has the appropriate permissions. There's one other thing that I just wanted to mention here. I'm just gonna collapse down these uh, folders. And if you just right click here, one of the things that you can do now is you can add a shared folder permission. So for example, if I was logging on as Megan, I, what I would now do, because I've been granted access to Adele's mailbox, I could simply go in and I could add in that shared folder and I could then search for the appropriate user and I would then, that mailbox would then be added in here. So that's a really nice uh, and very, very easy to use uh, feature. The final thing that I want to show you is just going back into uh, Microsoft 365 I'm gonna come back into Microsoft Exchange. Now, of course, when we talk about sharing, the ultimate sharing really is Microsoft 365 groups. But here in Microsoft 365 and specifically here in Exchange Online, if I go into groups, you'll notice here that we actually have four types of groups. So when we're talking about sharing mailboxes, you've got a couple of options. Um, now in Microsoft 365, you can have a security group and security groups have zero collaboration. They have no collaboration. One of the things you might want to do is create a mail enabled security group. So you saw me create a shared folder or a shared mailbox rather. A shared mailbox is just a mailbox. It has no security settings. So with a mail enable security group, you can not only receive email, but you can also set permissions on it as well. Now, of course, in terms of sharing and collaboration, a distribution list or contact list is probably one of the most basic. But of course, here we have Microsoft 365 groups. And Microsoft 365 groups, as you may or may not know, are truly collaborative groups. Um, so I can simply click here into Outlook, and if I scroll down, you can see already that I've got a number of groups here. And not only do we have a shared mailbox between the group, but you also get other features as well. You get, for example, um, a shared uh, OneDrive for Business or SharePoint. Uh, document libraries, I should say. And um, the other thing that you should also get is you also get, for example, a shared calendar. Um, you get a shared notebook, planner, a SharePoint website. And one of the things that you might do, of course, is you might upgrade the group to be the ultimate collaborative tool, which of course would be a Microsoft team. So there you have it. Exchange Online and Microsoft 365 mailbox sharing and permissions. Hey, look, I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned a lot from that. As always, I love your comments, questions, and feedback. So get them down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if by perchance uh, you've not subscribed, then go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on future tutorials. And if you've enjoyed the video, then again, go ahead and bump that like button. I would really appreciate that. All right, so that's it for this week. I really appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you soon. You stay safe, take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.